Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skyrim Zimik. The top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 29th of June. India Bhutan Inc. agreement for joint venture hydroelectric project. Six killed in attack on Pakistan saw exchange in Karachi, four gunmen shot dead. And protesters demand release of Baloch missing persons by Pakistani forces. And now for all the details, India recorded 19,459 new coronavirus cases and 380 deaths in the last 24 hours, taking total coronavirus cases in country to over 548,000. Meanwhile, India National Capital will get a plasma bank for the treatment of the novel coronavirus patients, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal announced on Monday. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Monday said that a plasma bank will be established in the national capital to help treat COVID-19 patients. The plasma bank will be set up at the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences in Delhi and anyone who needs plasma will need a recommendation from a doctor, he added. Kejriwal pointed out that the central government has allowed plasma therapy in Delhi government and private hospitals. The convalescent plasma therapy aims at using antibodies from the blood of a recovered COVID-19 patient to treat those critically affected by the virus. Plasma is the one who can give the corona that has happened and that has happened. The corona has happened and that has happened. The blood of the blood is antibodies that save the corona. If they take the blood of the blood from the blood, कोरोना को के मरीज को दे दिया जाए तो कोरोना का मरीज जल्दी ठीक हो जाता है उसके शरीर में भी एंटीबॉडीज बननी चालू हो जाती हैं तो इस टाइम लोग प्लाज्मा लेने के लिए दर्दर की ठोकरे खा रहे हैं इसीलिए दिल्ली सरकार ने तय किया है कि हम दिल्ली में प्लाज्मा बैंक बनाएंगे this comes as India recorded 19459 new कोरोना वायरस केसेस इन द लास्ट 24 आवर्स According to Health Ministry, the total coronavirus cases in the country stands at 548,318, including 210,120 active cases and 16,475 deaths. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Monday attended via video conference the signing ceremony of concession agreement for 600 megawatts Kolong Chu JV hydroelectric project in Bhutan. This will lead to the commencement of construction of the first joint venture hydroelectric project between India and Bhutan. The concessional agreement for the 600 megawatt Kolong Chu hydroelectric project located on the lower coast of the Kolong Chu River in eastern Bhutan's Trashyangse district was signed between India and Bhutan on Monday. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar attended the signing ceremony via video conference from New Delhi. This will lead to commencement of construction and other works of this first joint venture hydroelectric project between India and Bhutan, and the project is expected to be completed in the second half of 2025. Both J. Shankar and his Bhutanese counterpart Dr. Tandi Dorji emphasized the importance of hydropower development as an important pillar of mutually beneficial bilateral economy cooperation. This is the first ever joint venture project, as was noted, to be implemented in Bhutan. I congratulate both the JV partners, SJVNL of India and DGPC of Bhutan, for this remarkable feat and hope that they will both literally and metaphorically leave no stone unturned in expeditiously completing the project. Hydropower sector is the flagship area of India-Bhutan bilateral cooperation. 
The 720 megawatt Mangdechu hydroelectric project was jointly inaugurated earlier in August 2019 by the Prime Ministers of India and Bhutan. With this, four hydroelectric projects of bilateral cooperation are already operational in Bhutan. In the news from Pakistan, security forces killed four gunmen who attempted to storm the Pakistan Stock Exchange compound in Karachi City in a gun and grenade attack on Monday. There was no immediate claim of responsibility. Four gunmen attacked the Pakistani Stock Exchange building in the city of Karachi on Monday, but security forces killed them all, police said. Two other people were also killed, the military said, adding that the security forces were conducting a sweep for any remaining attackers. The gunmen attacked the building, which is in a high security zone that also houses the head offices of many private banks with grenades and guns, said Gulam Nabi Memon, chief of police in Pakistan's biggest city and its financial hub. The gunmen initially threw a grenade at security men posted outside the stock exchange compound, then opened fire on a security post. The four were killed when security forces posted there responded. There was no immediate claim of responsibility. Meanwhile, the Pakistan Stock Exchange did not suspend trading during the attack. Moving on, protests were held on Sunday in Balochistan and Germany against the illegal detention of Baloch political activists by Pakistani security and intelligence agencies. The protesters also raised the issue of enforced disappearances and oppression inflicted upon innocent civilians by Pakistan in Balochistan. Demonstrations were held in Balochistan as well as in Germany on Sunday against the illegal and forceful abduction of Baloch political activists and intellectuals by Pakistan's security and intelligence agencies. In Balochistan's Quetta city, demonstration was held by Voice for Baloch Missing Persons, a non-governmental organization which demanded the release of hundreds of missing persons, including Dr. Dean Mohammed Baloch, who was abducted 11 years ago. Similarly, the Baloch National Movement, a pro-independence party of Balochistan, also held protests in Berlin to mark the 11 years of Dr. Dean Mohammed Baloch's abduction. The protesters raised the issue of abductions, oppression and gross human rights violations inflicted by the Pakistani state agencies in Balochistan. Today, we are here to demand from the international community and so-called human rights organizations to pressurize Pakistan to stop abduction of Baloch political and human rights activists and release Dr. Zin Mohammed Baloch. Activists have long expressed concern over sharp rise in enforced disappearances and killings of political activists and innocent civilians by Pakistan. They blame thousands in the region have been internally displaced because of armed conflicts and army operations over the years. U.S. President Donald Trump on Sunday said he was never briefed about Russian efforts to pay bounties to Taliban-linked militants to kill U.S. troops in Afghanistan blasting a New York Times report that he had been told about the rewards but had not acted to respond to Moscow. U.S. President Donald Trump on Sunday on Twitter denied any prior knowledge of a report on Russian efforts to pay Taliban-linked militants to kill U.S. troops in Afghanistan. The tweet comes after U.S. intelligence found that a Russian military intelligence unit linked to assassination attempts in Europe offered rewards for successful attacks on American and coalition soldiers last year, and Islamist militants were believed to have collected some of the bounty money. The New York Times was first to report the news on Friday, and on Sunday, the Times published an additional report citing officials briefed on the matter. It said U.S. intelligence and special operations forces in Afghanistan alerted superiors about the suspected Russian bounty plot as early as January. The White House and Director of National Intelligence denied the report on Saturday. Russia's foreign ministry has also dismissed the report. The U.S. invaded Afghanistan in 2001, 
and the death toll of American service members has surpassed 2,400 in the longest war in Washington's history. In news from Bangladesh, at least 30 ferry passengers were killed in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka on Monday when the vessel in which they were travelling sank after a collision, local media reports said. A fire service official said the boat had around 50 passengers aboard when it capsized in Buri Ganga River that runs along southwest Dhaka. The dead include six women and three children. Some passengers swam ashore to safety, but some were still missing. Rescue operations were underway till the last reports came in. Hundreds of people die each year in ferry accidents in Bangladesh, a low-lying country that has extensive inland waterways but slacks safety standards. Private ambulances in capital Dhaka are playing a critical role in Bangladesh's fight against the coronavirus, where there is a shortage of official hospital ambulances. The vehicle has become so ingrained in the country's virus response, its official emergency helpline 999 now directly links callers to private ambulances. Thousands of private ambulances in Dhaka are playing a critical role in Bangladesh's fight against the coronavirus, where there is a shortage of official hospital ambulances. There are approximately 6,000 private ambulances in Bangladesh, half of them in the capital, that do the difficult work of transporting patients as well as the diseased in and out of the city, compared to about 500 government hospital ambulances, according to President of the Bangladesh Ambulance Owners Association. The private vehicles have become so ingrained in the country's widest response, its official emergency helpline 999 now directly links callers to private ambulances along with traditional police and fire services. In recent months, the emergency 999 number has essentially become like a coronavirus hotline. Bangladesh is a very good ambulance. We have a ambulance in the Bangladesh. We have a ambulance in the Bangladesh. We have a ambulance in the Bangladesh. We have there are 490 private ambulances specifically tasked to work with the line, although dispatchers can call upon the other private providers as well. এই মহামারি অবস্থায় স্যার সারা বাংলাদেশে করোনা রোগী সারা অন্য কোন রোগী পাচ্ছি না আমরা এখন। যেখানে যাচ্ছি সেখানে করোনা রোগী এবং আমার ডেড বডি নিয়ে এই পর্যন্ত থেকে এই পর্যন্ত যাচ্ছি স্যার। As of Monday, there have been 137,787 coronavirus cases in Bangladesh and 1,738 deaths. With the peak season currently ongoing, farmers in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province have said they are aiming the Middle Eastern markets to export their mango produce and increase their revenues. Indian mangoes account for 60% of the world's production. Farmers in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province have said they are aiming the Middle Eastern markets to export their mango produce and increase their revenues with peak season currently ongoing. Indian mangoes, which account for 60% of the world's production, are in great demand and are known as the king of fruits, but exporters are yet to tap the global market potential. India, being the largest producer of mangoes in the world, produces mangoes worth millions a year. A farmer said the government has been supporting them amid the coronavirus pandemic. हमारे यहाँ का दशहरी है, लंगड़ा है, चौसा है और अदर्स वैरायटीज हैं। अब उसको प्रमोट करने के लिए हमने काफी मेहनत की है और सरकार ने भी हमारा साथ दिया तो हमने अपनी पूरी मार्केट में मिडिल ईस्ट की पकड़ की है पच्चीस मित्र विदेश के आम के लिए। Indian mangoes are exported to many Middle Eastern and European countries from India. They are used to make deserts, juice, shakes, mousse and puri. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.